Hi everyone, so we're going to continue now with our discussion of the basic terms and thermodynamics and we're going to continue on talking about this idea of systems, surroundings and universe in thermodynamics. So remember that in the previous video I mentioned a little bit about this uh, to the fact that you know you can transfer energy between two different systems. So for example I mentioned earlier that if you have a hot cup of coffee and you put it in a you know let's say the lecture hall for example uh, over time, the hot cup, of hot cup of coffee will become cold. You know, will become uh, equilibrated with room temperature. So initially, its temperature is very high, but eventually, the temperature will uh, decrease to uh, having the same temperature as the room temperature. And uh, when that happens, of course, we're transferring energy. There's an energy that's being transferred from the hot cup of coffee to the surrounding uh, gas particles that make up the air around the um, cup okay or the air in the lecture hall so in thermodynamics it's very common that we uh, try to specify exactly uh, the, the components or the object that we want to study the energy of okay so this is what we refer to as the system so the system is basically the part of the universe whose energy we're specifically interested in looking at, okay? So in this particular case um, uh, of a reaction, here's a chemical reaction, for example. Um, you know, the reaction occurs inside this flask, okay? So really the system for uh, chemists at that point is just these things that are inside the flask, okay? We don't care about the flask. We don't care about the box around the flask. We just look at the stuff that's inside the flask itself which is basically the molecules of the reactants and products so as I wrote down here in chemistry uh, what we looked at is we look at changes in energy from the systems perspective so we're looking at these molecules in here of course we can't see them literally but when we're measuring energy we're thinking about the energy of these guys only so the system in chemistry is the particles they're involved in the reaction, which, in other words, uh, what I'm saying is that we're only looking at the energy of the reactants and the products, okay, before and after a reaction. Um, the surroundings, on the other hand, are, you know, they're basically everything else that interact with the system in a direct way. But, it, you know, in general, it's basically everything else in the universe that's not the system, okay? So you can see here in this picture the system now it's blacked out right it's colored gray but everything else is blue and so that's the surrounding whereas in this picture everything else is great except for the system the system is blue now when you add the system and the surroundings together you get the universe as far as energy is concerned okay so the energy of the universe remember has to be constant that's the first law of thermodynamics uh, but the energy of the system and the surroundings doesn't have to be constant because they can exchange energy you can see that uh, the system can, you know, gain or lose energy. The surrounding can gain or lose energy as a result of its interaction with the system, okay? But these are some, you know, again, basic terms that you need to know. So when we talk about, you know, calculating the uh, energy of the system, you know what I'm trying to refer to. And again, I want to emphasize that, that in chemistry, we looked at energy from the perspective of the system. So it's sort of like you're one of the particles in here, and you're trying to see, am I getting energy? Or am I losing energy? Okay. If if you know when we write down the signs later on, we'll talk about the signs of different energy. We're really looking from the perspective of the system. Okay. Um, and in chemistry, the system is our reactants and and uh, product particles. Uh, it's also important to talk a little bit about the different types of system that you might see in chemistry. So. An open system would basically look something like this. Here's a test tube. You have some reactions going on. And an open system is basically a system where energy is uh, easily exchanged with uh, uh, the outside, with the surroundings, from the systems to the surroundings. And matter can also exchange between surrounding and system. In other words, if it's open here, you can see that some gases which are might be produced by this reaction can easily escape out into the uh, atmosphere so there's nothing that prevents matter and energy both from going in and out of the system a closed system on the other hand is a system where uh, matter can't go in or out in this case you can see that there's a uh, basically something that 
plugs in this test tube so as a result if you have gases the gases are still trapped inside so matter which is something with mass you know has certain velocity it can't get out of this test tube but energy might still be able to get out of this uh, test tube for example if the um, test tube is very hot at the beginning if you just leave it there over time it will cool down and uh, equilibrate its temperature with the surrounding so the energy itself can still uh, be transferred uh, out of the test tube but matter which is the gases and everything they have to be uh, uh, stuck in there the particles have to be in there but then the energy can be transferred out or into the um, or into the test tube okay now an isolated system is basically a system where you can't exchange uh, either matter or energy both of them cannot be exchanged so in other words uh, if you look at this it's basically that same test tube from number two but it's now you know covered with some kind of uh, thermal insulation so in other words the uh, uh, like a thermos of something so that would be kind of a, a good approximation of what an isolated system is because if you put something inside a thermos and you close it off right uh, it will keep at you know uh, at that temperature uh, for a good period of time now of course not nothing is uh, completely isolated so even a thermos over time if you let it sit for a long period of time eventually the temperature will come down that just suggests that there's some kind of leak of energy uh, from from inside the system the thermos to the outside uh, but you know for uh, uh, an approximation it's that's what a, uh, a um, an isolated system would be okay so it's important to understand this because sometimes we want to measure energy of a, an open system or a closed system or an isolated system. Uh, and that's why it's important to differentiate between these different systems. Now earlier I mentioned that you want to, what we want to be able to do is basically think about how much energy is needed for a reaction or how much energy is produced by a reaction. Because remember that going back to the first video I, I talked about in this topic, energy is correlated with molecular structure so if we understand how much energy is released or absorbed we can then have an understanding of what molecules what the molecules look like during that reaction okay so we have a, a convention or a rule uh, for denoting signs for writing the signs for energy flow okay remember what we talked about before if you have a, uh, uh, so this is kind of the analogy here is like you have a uh, bag of money that's inside a safe deposit, okay? So if uh, that's your system, okay, that bag of money is your system. So if energy goes into the system, the bag of money, let's say you put in money into the bag of money, you get the money, the bag gets bigger. That means that we consider that to be a positive for the bag, right? Because you're getting more money, so it's positive for the bag. Vice versa, if you take money out from the back, then we consider that to be a negative for the back, so then the back gets smaller, okay? You can see here at the bottom, that's how it's written. So remember that what, you know, the money, of course, represents the energy. So if we uh, put in energy, that means the system gets energy. That means that the change in energy from the final, which is this state, uh, compared to the initial, which is this, is a positive number. So then delta E, which is the change in the internal energy, is greater than zero or is positive. Vice versa, if you actually lose energy, okay, and we'll talk about how the system can lose energy later on, but if you lose energy, the bag gets smaller, you take money out or you take energy out. Uh, if you compare the size of this bag, which is in the final state, versus the size of the bag initially, you'll see that it gets smaller, so if you take that the final minus the initial you get a negative number so delta e is negative when energy uh, goes out of the system so again when energy when the system gains energy the the delta e is positive when the uh, system loses energy delta e is uh, negative here's another way of uh, summarizing what i just mentioned uh, if uh, energy leaves the system as a result of a process that process could be a reaction for chemistry it would be a reaction let's say you have a reaction and energy leaves the system then we would say that the delta e the change in the energy of the system is negative uh, now if the change of the energy of the si system is negative we know that the only thing next to the the system is the surrounding so if the energy uh, is going away or is being released by the system 
then of course the surroundings would absorb that energy and as a result the delta E of the surrounding will be positive okay so that should be hopefully something that's fairly easy to understand whatever happens to the system the exact opposite happened to the surrounding in terms of energy transfer now vice versa if you have an energy uh, component going into the system okay then the energy of the system gets more becomes more than what it, it starts with so the delta E of the system is positive because the only place that could donate that energy is the surrounding that means the surroundings energy must have gone down as a result of that reaction or that process okay now think about it in either way we whether energy leaves the system or goes into the system right for both processes the delta E of the universe is zero because remember that the energy content of the universe has to be constant so that means that regardless of whatever processes happen all over the universe that number stays constant which means the change in the energy of the universe has to be zero okay it never changes from the beginning of the universe till now